Tom Hanks is getting married. Yet before there was The Hangover, there was Bachelor Party, zany and outrageous comedy released in 1984 where Tom Hanks plays Rick, a wise-talking man-child who drives a school bus who is full of plenty of wise cracks but at the same time still has a heart of gold. When Rick gets engaged to his girlfriend Debbie, his best friends decide to throw him a bachelor party like no other. Although the party gets off to a slow, shaky start, the night eventually descends into madness with all manner of outrageous shenanigans as the night becomes a spiral of heavy drinking, partying, assassination attempts and a mule. But most of all, it's a night of temptation. The big question is, will Rick survive his bachelor party? Will he stay true to his word to Debbie or will the temptations at his bachelor party get the better of him? Get ready, Tom Hanks is making potato salad as we look into 10 things that you didn't know about Bachelor Party, an oddball comedy that is so unbelievably 80s. It is so 80s, it is a place where clothes stores look like this. So let's check it out. You're a slob. You dress like a bum. Second, you're... You have no self-esteem. No thought about the future. You're inconsiderate. You're insincere. And you're irresponsible. Well, Sh Mr. Uh, Thompson, that's really quite a list. And you're right. I think if I really apply myself, I could be a totally changed person by the time we finish lunch. Number 10. Based on a real bachelor party. <laughs> The sequence of events of Bachelor Party seems so over the top and far-fetched, the idea that it could be based on a true story seems ridiculous. However, Bachelor Party is somewhat based on a real Bachelor Party that many of the movie's crew and even cast took part in. It was the Bachelor Party of producer Bob Israel, of which the night was just so insane and memorable, the party of filmmakers knew that they had a good comedy movie on their hands and had to turn the events of the real Bachelor Party into a movie. So in a weird way, I guess you could say the Rick character is a prototype of the movie's producer, Bob Israel. It is unclear what events of the movie are based on real events, so we can only assume that it was quite an insane Bachelor Party. Number 9. Bachelor Party is made by the same team who made Police Academy. When I, you, and we... Many of the crew who worked on Police Academy also worked on Bachelor Party, particularly Neil Israel, the brother of Bob Israel, and Pat Proft, both of whom wrote Police Academy. Police Academy also came out in 1984, and due to the movie's huge success, the two writers wanted to get straight to work on making their next comedy caper, and hence their next project was Bachelor Party, taking the zany behaviour out of the police force and putting it into a hotel room. Although Police Academy is itself a wonderfully outrageous comedy, Bachelor Party definitely feels more edgy and raunchy. And I mentioned in my Police Academy episode that Police Academy's director, Hugh Wilson, wanted to tone down that movie a bit and focus less on sleaze and more on realism. So in a nutshell, Bachelor Party was Neil Israel and Pat Prof let loose to their own devices without any restrictions from directors not liking their style. After all, Neil Israel was Bachelor Party's director. Number 8. Original Casting The on-screen romance between the Rick and Debbie characters feels genuine and sweet, thanks to the acting talents of Tom Hanks and Tawny Katane. In order for the movie to work, the on-screen chemistry between the couple had to be believable. However, apparently, originally, actors Paul Reiser of Aliens and Kelly McGill's of Top Gun were originally cast as the movie's main leads, but their on-screen chemistry just didn't have the spark the production team were looking for, so they were let go from the production and recast with Hanks and Katane. But it wasn't all bad for Reiser, as that very year he starred in another comedy classic, that being Beverly Hills Cop. In addition to that, Ted McGinley was originally cast as the character Ryko, but he had to drop out due to filming conflicts with Revenge of the Nerds. So he was placed with American Ninja star Michael Dudikoff, who I swear looks like Tim Matheson on the movie's poster. And not seeing him in an action film but a comedy one is interesting, as I've personally only ever seen him in action movies. Heck, at one stage he was going to play Spider-Man in Canon Films' failed Spider-Man movie. Number 7. Creating a Man-Child The character of Rick is very unique. 
He's constantly pulling out funny and sarcastic jibes at the expense of people who try to give him a hard time, as well as being a carefree slob and a man-child. But the character still has plenty of likability, so he never comes off as mean-spirited. And thankfully the part was pulled off because it was played by Tom Hanks, one of the most likable actors in Hollywood. However, Hanks claimed that the Rick character is a reflection of himself when he was a teenager. As he said in an interview, that Rick is basically just how he was in high school. Only Rick has definitely seen some action in high school whereas he didn't. Hanks at the time was seen as something of a comedy actor thanks to his on cue comedic timing and when the movie came out it was marketed as starring Tom Hanks from Splash, another comedy movie starring Tom Hanks which also came out in 1984. When speaking of his character Rick, Hanks said that the biggest conflict of the character is will he or won't he at his own bachelor party, addressing the movie's theme of premarital temptation. Bachelor Party, Police Academy, Beverly Hills Cop, Revenge of the Nerds, Splash, Ghostbusters. There was an awful lot of comedy movies in 1984. It was awesome. Number six, The Twilight Zone Connection. Who would have thought it that something as wacky as Bachelor Party would have a connection to The Twilight Zone of all things? But yeah, it actually does. In Bachelor Party, George Gizzard and Barbara Stewart play Debbie's parents who aren't too thrilled with the fact that their daughter is marrying the Rick character, with the father downright despising him. Well, both George Gizzard and Barbara Stewart starred in episodes of the classic Twilight Zone series, with Gizzard appearing in the 1959 episode The Chaser and Stewart appearing in the 1960 episode A Thing About Machines. And given some of the wacky events that happen in Bachelor Party, the two probably felt that they had entered the Twilight Zone again, be that a drunk 80s version. So yeah, Bachelor Party does have a connection to the Twilight Zone. And knowing odd obscurities like this makes making this show even more fun. Bachelor Party also has a connection to Back to the Future, as Wendy Jo Sperber, who played the no-nonsense wife of Stan, Rick's brother, also played Marty McFly's sister, Linda McFly, in the Back to the Future film series. Number 5, A Modern Romance Movie Despite the fact that Bachelor Party utilises lashings of vulgar comedy with outrageous over-the-top antics, director and co-writer Neil Israel claims that underneath the mayhem, Bachelor Party is above everything, a romance story. A simple love story about a man and a woman getting married. So maybe Bachelor Party is just a different type of romantic movie. One that involves a mule. Israel claims that the true story of Bachelor Party is about resisting temptations, the conflict being can Rick survive his Bachelor Party? Israel also joked that Bachelor Party is the first movie to give female viewers a glimpse into what happens at Bachelor Parties, and insists that when men say that they're just going to be playing cards at their Bachelor Parties, they really aren't. Actress Tawny Katane, who played Debbie, said that Bachelor Party is actually a comforting story, to see men not succumbing to everything thrown at them at a Bachelor Party. In other words, choosing love over lust and temptation. So, who would have thought that all this time, there was something deep and philosophical about Bachelor Party? Number 4. Bachelor Party makes fun of the short-lived 1980s 3D craze. The movie's climax takes place in a movie theatre, where the movie's villain Cole tries to kidnap Debbie, where Rick and Cole fight it out in front of a movie screen, which is screening a 3D movie, with the audience thinking that the fight is all just part of the 3D effect. The irony being that Bachelor Party came out during the short-lived 3D revival in cinema. When the 3D gimmick briefly came back, particularly in movies such as Amity 3D, Jaws 3D and Friday the 13th 3D. In fact, by the time Bachelor Party came out, the 3D revival was winding down. And in a sense of irony, the movie audience cheers when a bus literally crashes through the screen, which is almost symbolic of the 1980s 3D craze itself. It crashed. Speaking of the fight, that is clearly not Tom Hanks, but a stunt double. You know, just throwing it out there. Number three, sequel. Yeah, there was actually a sequel to Bachelor Party, something I wasn't even aware of till doing research for this episode. Bachelor Party 2 The Last Temptation came out in 2008, a whole 24 years after the release of the original. And interestingly enough, the screenplay was written by Neil Israel and Pat Proft, who wrote the screenplay for the 1984 film. 
The only real connection it has with its original is that it features a bachelor party, so don't be expecting a cameo from Tom Hanks or anyone else who featured in the original. The straight-to-video sequel was originally intended to be a remake until it was decided to make it a follow-up, and by that they just added the number 2 to the title. Now I haven't seen the movie so I can't really pass comment on it, but going by the trailer it looks like it's trying to appeal to the American Pie and Road Trip generation, and the characters seem loud and obnoxious, and it didn't go down well with critics and has since slipped into obscurity. Now once again I haven't seen the film so I can't really pass comment on it. Maybe Bachelor Party 2 The Last Temptation is a true hidden movie masterpiece. Who knows? Number 2. Release. <laughs> Bachelor Party performed fairly impressive at the box office, making $38.4 million on a $7 million budget, bringing in quite a profit. Now granted, it didn't do as well as the writer's other comedy movie of that year, Police Academy, which made $149.8 million, but it still brought in a tidy profit. And it was another step up the ladder for the career of Tom Hanks, who at that stage was increasingly becoming a big-time actor. It certainly had better reviews than Police Academy, and shockingly, Roger Ebert actually liked the movie and recommended it! In fact, Bachelor Party had some major competition as it was released in June, which saw it competing against other classic movies such as Gremlins, Ghostbusters, Star Trek III The Search for Spock, and Conan the Destroyer, all of which were major event movies. And trust me, in 1984, going against Gremlins and Ghostbusters is no easy feat, so it did quite well despite its competition. Number 1. The TV Show That Never Happened So if the idea of Bachelor Party having a sequel wasn't weird enough, in 2014 ABC announced that it was developing a TV show based on Bachelor Party. My biggest question to this is, how? I mean, a Bachelor Party takes place over one night. How are you going to be able to stretch that into an entire series? Well, apparently the show was going to focus on three different couples. One couple who were starting to fall in love, another couple whom were about to get married, and another couple who were going for a divorce. Which is all fine, but maybe call it something else, and not just ride on the nostalgic love for the Bachelor Party movie. But regardless, five years later in 2019 there is still no TV show, so we can only assume that the project has been shelved. Bachelor Party is definitely a product of its time. The jokes may be a little risque by today's standards, but it's just a fun, loud, off-the-wall comedy. A time capsule of a more carefree 80s. Its greatest appeal is Tom Hanks, who fires on all cylinders with his acting, as he could be both funny and charming. So if you like comedies like Animal House, Caddyshack and Police Academy, then I say check it out. You'll enjoy it. Anyway, I'm Minty, and Bachelor Party is the only time you're going to hear Tom Hanks saying Bond, James Bond. Bond, James Bond. That's awesome. See ya.